Romans chapter 8 verse 24 For we are saved by hope But hope that is seen is not hope For what a man seeth Why do he yet hope for? I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hope for elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, back at you again with another lesson. And this one is going to be uh, here in the book of Romans, chapter 8, and uh, starting at the verse 24. It says, uh, For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? Now, it says, let me read 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So our kingdom, you know, that's coming with this, they say Yahweh Shai, is all dealing with hope. All right. Faith. Believing. You know, those three key words, believing, let's say faith, believing, hope, faith, believing, hope. All right. Because at the end of the day, this is what we believe. All right. And we have, you know, strong faith that the word of the Lord is true. You know, you can clearly see that the things, the prophecies which are written in the scriptures are coming to pass. So that makes, all right, the word of the Lord true. So it says, for we are saved by hope. All right. If you don't hope, then you don't have uh, confidence. You don't have courage when there's no hope. All right. Matter of fact, let me uh, just see what the dictionary say for hope. It says, if you hope that something is true or if you hope for something, you want it to be true or to happen, and you usually believe that it is possible or likely, all right? And that's just a quick definition of hope, all right? Hope to get a job, right? When you hope for something, it means you want it to be true. Let's read that again. If you hope that something is true, or if you hope for something, you want it to be true or to happen, and you usually believe that it is possible or likely, all right? And we believe strongly, all right, in the word of the Lord, all right? Because the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, all right, in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, all right, he has given his hopeful elect faith, all right? It says, uh, but hope that is seen is not hope, because if you see something, you know, why would you hope when you can actually see it? But when you don't see something, you hope. It says, for what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Now, let me uh, come here to Hebrews 11 and verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the Most High. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, this is hope. This is faith. This is believing Okay, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it's evidence. When the Lord have given you that special gift of faith, which, which I'm going to go to. Let's get that real quick. Ephesians 2 and 8. When the Lord have given you this special gift of faith, you obtain the mercy of hope it says for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of the most high all right so faith is a gift okay faith gives you hope 
okay hope gives you uh the um inspiration to believe okay for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of the most high now i want to go back one more time hebrews 11 and 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so we have evidence that I, that the word of the lord is true because we hope all right the substance of things we hope for all right and also through prophecy okay the most high has truly sent his prophets to speak the word all right before it actually manifests the prophecies and the scriptures are manifesting right now right now we're headed into jacob's trouble we at the end of esau's kingdom okay let me uh this is not uh so like it this is not really a you know real thoughtful lesson it's kind of precepts just going in the spirit uh this is second edge six we're going to second edge six and six right it says then did i consider these things and they were made through me alone and through none other by me also they shall be ended and by none other this is the most high speaking to edris it says then answered i and said what shall be the part in the sunder of the times or when shall the end be of the first in the beginning of it that followeth so edris was asking the lord when is the the end of the times when is the the end and the beginning all right when is the end of the first in the beginning of it that followeth because edris knew that we wasn't in our kingdom yet all right we wasn't to live out the glory which was promised to us so it says verse 8 it says and he said unto me from abraham unto isaac when jacob and esau were born of him jacob's hand held first the hill of esau so when you read about jacob and esau and you get to the point where it speaks on how jacob's hand held first the hill of esau Okay, this is symbolic to show you that these are the times where Jacob is going to pull Esau out of power. All right, and what's that in Daniel's? The scriptures say Daniel's, uh, so like, uh, I can't think, but I'll quote it. Um, the saints shall take the kingdom. All right, how is the saints going to take the kingdom? By Yahweh Shai. Okay, remember, Yahweh Shai was of the tribe of Judah. Okay, he was a he was of the sons of Jacob. Okay, he came through that line of the children of Israel. And he came out to be what? Of the tribe of Judah. So Yahweh Shai is going to take the kingdom. All right. Yahweh Shai is a saint. He's an Israelite. It says, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we're in that time that Esau end is near. We at the end of Esau's world. So when we say the end of the world, it's the world of Esau. Alright, this word world goes back, you know, into the uh uh I believe it's eon. Alright. Greek word eon, which means rulership, age, period of time. So at the end of the rulership of Esau, having the whole world according to the blessing which was given to him from Isaac, all right, the fatness of the earth to live by the sword, it says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob was blessed, all right, he was blessed, which he had um, supplanted Esau for the blessing, which was the birthright, all right, the birthright, and we're yet to be in our birthright yet where we our kingdom have not begun yet all right when esau fall you can say our kingdom is is uh is just begin and the lord said our kingdom is the everlasting kingdom all right so let me go back to the book of romans chapter 8 and 24 for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth why do he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not 
then do we with patience wait for it? You know, I'm thinking, you know, also it's coming in my mind that this is, an also, this is also a reason why we don't remember our past lives. You know, the men of the Lord had visions, dreams, saw miracles, done miracles, you know. And then when you die, you die all right, you rest in your chamber with the Lord. The Lord have sent them back. And they came in the earth to do the work all over again, you know, to finish the work. But they have no remembrance of uh, the of, of what they've done in the past because it's all about hope. It's all about faith. It's all about believing. All right. Verse 25, it says, but if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. See, so with patience, patience means to suffer. We wait for it. And the Lord is giving us a sort of time clock, which is to watch the prophecies. And you know, they, they, we, we here, you know, we're, we're here at the door, you know, the end is at the door knocking, you know, waiting to open the door. So verse 26, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself make an intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. So, you know, when we pray, we don't know exactly what we should be praying for because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. All we pray for is that the Lord God our steps in righteousness. All right. And it says, likewise, the spirit help of our infirmities. You know, brothers are going through infirmities at a time of Jacob's trouble. You know, it says, you know, uh, it says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. It says, but the spirit itself maketh intercession. For us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. It says, and we and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Yahweh. And who's that? That's Yahweh Shai. All right. He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai knows what's in our hearts. This is why it's important to be sincere. All right, to be honest, to be truthful. You have to be truthful with yourself in order to be truthful with others. You know, it says verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are called according to his purpose. So who are called according to his purpose? The Lord's hope for elect. All right, the first fruits. It says verse 29, it says for whom he did foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And that's Yahweh Shai, being the first spirit created. So the elect, the powers that came behind Yahweh Shai, they are in the image of the heavenly father's son, Yahweh Shai. All right. Now that word predestinate, I'm going to give it a quick definition search. It says, if you say that something is predestinated, you mean that it could not have been prevented or changed because it had already been decided by a power such as the Most High or fate. You see that? So predestinated is a strong word. Okay? That's a word that proves that the Most High does divine intervention, meaning he interferes. He does a work before the work gets get before it manifests he has the way of things planned already so when Esau thinking he's on top of things the most high is above him so it says if you say that something is was predestinated you mean that it could not have been prevented all right so you couldn't prevent coming into this truth for the Lord's elect they could not prevent in the calling in which the Lord called it says, or change because it had already been decided. You can't change it because it's already been decided. It says, by a power such as the Most High or fate. And we know that's really of the Most High, Yahweh. Okay? All right, verse 30. It says, moreover, you know, uh, also you can grab precepts that Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I knew, I knew thee in the belly, you know? Um, verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. 
and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So the Lord's elect is justified in the eyes of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh It says, what shall we say then to these things? If Yahweh be for us, who can be against us? He that spread not his own he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of Yahweh's elect? It is Yahweh that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Yahweh Shai that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Yahweh, who also maketh intercession for us. All right, so Yahweh Shai is praying for us, man. So I hope this lesson will uplift, brothers, and the spirit keep you motivated, you know. Pray for courage, you know, and continue to keep pushing. Pray for strength, because Yahweh Shai is praying for us. Yahweh Shai is watching over us, all right. He's watching over this sincere, hopeful elect. Who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? See, these are all troubles. Shall these troubles separate your faith, your love for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai? As it is written, for thou sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Because it seems as though, it seems as though we're like sheep headed to the slaughter. All right, we don't have an army we don't have a plan we haven't been doomsday prepping all right the real men of the lord the sincere brothers of the lord are not stockpiling on guns and stockpiling on food all right we're clearly in this thing straight up with faith i'm thinking of the account where yahweh shai sent the disciples out by twos and he told them not to take a purse nor extra sandals and that was the that was for them to practice faith all right. So how much more now? It's all about faith. It's all about hope. It's all about believing. At the end of the day, it's about faith, hope, and believing in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, um, it says, as it is written, for thou sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through Him that love us. So we're more than conquerors through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah that loves us. So we're not just sheep headed for the slaughter. Though it seem. Though it seem. We're not sheep headed to the slaughter. Paul said, no. In all things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Because it was the most high Yahweh Shai, Okay. To pour his spirit down upon the men. And to do the work that the most high wanted. He wanted to be done. All right. This is why we tell you, you know, start with our apostles and elders on down that this thing is a movie, man. This is the most highest movie. And everything is playing out. Everybody's playing, uh, uh, saying their lines, just like the actors do in the movie theater, you know, in the movies they create. Well, this is real life movie. And we all got lines and scripts. And we're playing our part whenever the scene is played. Whenever the camera's on you, so to say, right? Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh, which is in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord. You know, so nothing is going to separate the Lord's elect from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Remember, Yahweh Shai said, you cannot pluck these out of my hand. Okay? So, when it comes down to the vaccination, it comes down to being microchip, because the vaccination is nothing but more than, it's just a prelude. Alright? It's just a prelude to usher in the microchip, which is the mark of the beast, the RFID microchip. Alright? The Lord said, uh, 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 the hours of temptation. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick, and I'm going to wrap this thing up. Revelations 3 and 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. See, we, we already read about patience. I mean, to suffer for the hope that we believe in, in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, our faith. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, 
I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, how is this going to happen? The Lord is using Esau to bring this tribulation, all right, the hours of temptation upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. It says, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thou crown. And we haven't received crowns yet. We're hoping that the Lord give us a crown. We're hoping to be of the Lord's elect. You know? And that crown represents salvation. We're hoping to be delivered. All right? From the thermonuclear destruction. We're hoping to be exempt from the hours of temptation. And the Heavenly Father's judgment. All right? That he's going to bring upon the wicked. This judgment that's coming is for the wicked. So if you honestly, you know, sincere... You in the truth, you believe in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, you giving it all you got, all right? Then you don't have to worry, man. You don't have to worry. Okay? So, verse 12, him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my power, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my power and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven, from my power, Yahweh, and will write upon him my new name. All right. And that new name is not talking about something new. All right. The name of the Lord is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So hopefully I hope this lesson was edifying. All right. Uplift you. You know, remember the Lord's words. You know, crunch time is coming. And um, remember this faith, hope, and believing in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So, Lord's willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.